This motion to dismiss a three-and-a-half-year-old indictment highlights the all-too-frequent mishandling of cases where a defendant has more than one indictment pending against him. Once again, a court is confronted with conflicting affidavits by reputable defense and prosecuting attorneys concerning purported agreements informally arrived at with no support for respective positions in the court record. In 1972, the defendant, Joseph Gandhi, and a co-defendant, Edward Rackley, had two indictments pending against them. In indictment number 412-72, they were charged with murder and robbery. In indictment number 773-72, they were charged with robbery and other crimes. Gandhi and Rackley went to trial on the murder indictment in October of 1973 and were convicted of manslaughter and robbery. On December 3, 1973, each defendant was sentenced to eight and a third to 25 years on the manslaughter conviction and zero to 15 years on the robbery convictions those sentences to run concurrently. On June 26, 1975, the convictions were affirmed by the Appellate Division, New York State Supreme Court, First Judicial Department. Meanwhile, indictment number 773-72 hibernated in a judicial limbo occasionally appearing on a court calendar early to be adjourned <coughs> to its normal dormant state. Now, almost four years after the date of the alleged crime, <coughs> the defendant moves for a dismissal of indictment number 773-72 on the grounds that he has been denied his constitutional and statutory rights to a speedy trial under the 6th and 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution and Section 30.20 of the Criminal Procedure Law and Section 12 of the Civil Rights Law. The District Attorney advances two contentions in opposition. First, that under CPL Section 30.30.4, Paren A, the period from December 3rd, 1973 until June 26th, 1975, during which the homicide conviction was being appealed, must be excluded from any time lag between indictment and trial. And secondly, that the defendant consented to all adjournments until June of 1975 and thereby waived his right to a speedy trial. The district attorney first, uh, uh, attorney's first argument is based on his interpretation of Section 30 of the Criminal Procedure Law, which provides as follows. In computing the time within which the people must be ready for trial, pursuant to Subdivision 1 and 2, commensurate with the following periods, the following must be excluded. A reasonable period of delay resulting from other proceedings concerning the defendant, including but not limited to proceedings for the determination of competency and the period during which defendant is incompetent to stand trial. Pre-trial motions, appeals, trial of other charges, and the period during which such matters are under consideration by the court. The district attorney asserts that the word appeals in this tolling statute means that during the time the defendant appealed his homicide conviction, the people were not required to proceed on the robbery case. <coughs> 